Hi, and welcome to Biostock Studio. In March, Spago Nanomedical enhanced the dose with their cancer drug candidate in the ongoing phase 1-2A study. This is an uh, important step, and we have CDO Paul Hargreaves here to, um, to tell us why it's an important step. <laughs> welcome, Paul. Thank you. It's nice to be back. So let's uh, zoom out a little bit to begin with. So this is all about the Tumorate 1 study. Can you briefly tell us what the uh, aim of that study is. Okay, so Tumorad 01 is the first study we're running for our radiopharmaceutical Tumorad. And basically it's a study with um, in clinical patients, um, both phase one is the first part, the first in human part of the study where we test the dose to find what's safe to give to patients. Then the second part, which we'll come on later to, is very much where we're looking to enhance the dosage to really get the best efficacy we can for the product. And this was all, uh, like I mentioned in, in the introduction, the enhanced dose. This is based on um, a recommendation from the Independent Data Monitoring Committee. What data is behind their recommendation? So the data that they look at is basically everything that we collect from the patient, but primarily the safety. They want to know that the drug that we're giving is not doing any harm to these patients. Um, but they also look a little bit wider um, than just the safety to make sure that it's, it's reasonable to continue giving these patients. They're very sick individuals, and this is sort of their last chance. So you don't want to continue with something that hasn't got any hope of helping them. And then the, the big question, I guess, why is this increase significant? Well, the increase is significant um, because it basically says that the DMC, the Data Monitoring Committee, is happy that we've got safe doses. So each time we want to increase the dose, we go to this independent group of experts and have them check the data and to really approve that we can go to a higher dose and hoping for more efficacy in these patients. And in terms of the, the timeline of the study, what does this mean? So we're coming towards um, the higher doses that we expect to be um, giving to patients. We will look to, towards the end of this year, try to decide which tumor types are the best to go into for the patients, and also what is the best timing of the doses. So it's not like a tablet that you take every day, because it's a radiation treatment. You need to give the right amount of time between doses. So we'll also have data on that that we can put into the phase two part of this study. And looking at what you sort of find out from this study, sort of beyond safety, how is the study helping you optimize, for example, imaging for more precise treatment planning with your, your candidate? So one of the good things with a radiopharmaceutical is that you can see where the drug goes. So you can see when it's going to the tumor or whether it's going to other organs. Radio pharmaceuticals, though, all behave slightly differently. So with this study, we can start to do the images and have experts help us enhance the way that we actually look at the trial and the, the actual drug where it's going to, to really help us understand, again, around the dosage. How do we make sure we're not giving too much that's getting concentrated in the wrong areas? Um, but also the frequency of that, to make sure the patient can have the, the least side effects as for their treatment. And now, of course, the study is moving on to a, a more advanced stage. What are the, um, the key objectives of this next stage? So from our, from our point of view, we've, in the phase one, been able to look at numerous different tumor types. So we've not gone with just a single cancer type. We'll, for phase two, start to actually select down which is the best types of tumors to go for. And also, as I said previously, what the actual best dosing way is. How much do we give the patient and how often do we give it to have the maximum possible effect? And as a final question, then, could you tell us a little bit about what the response has been like from, from clinical sites, investigators, as the study has progressed? So we've been very, very pleased, actually, that the, uh, the Australian investigators that we're working with have been so very, very positive to the study. Um, often with these oncology trials, you have problems with recruitment, which we've not had um, with those. We've also might been able to have some very good experts from the, the leading cancer sites down in Australia to be part of our imaging team and also part of the, uh, the data monitoring uh, committee. So all in all, I think there's quite a bit of excitement certainly here in Sweden and also down in Australia around this compound. Well, that sounds very interesting. Thank you so much for coming and, and telling us about it, Paul. Thank you very much for having me.